Welcome back. This is the first video on blueprint communications. We're going to explore the three major types of blueprint communications, starting with the target blueprint, which is what we'll be covering today. So first we'll open up the Epic's Game Launcher. Make sure that you're logged in and that you have an engine installed. We're gonna to go to the Learn tab. If you scroll down a little ways, there is a project called Content Examples. If you go ahead and click on that, open it up, you'll be able to create a new project from this uh, Content Example project. Just choose the, choose the version of the engine that you have and click on Create. I already have it installed, so I'm gonna click Don't Create. I'm gonna go into my library and I have it right here. I'm just gonna launch it up. So this is a project that was put out with the Unreal Engine 4 and it kind of showcases a bunch of different, most of the original features in the Unreal Engine and it's kind of developed along the way. It's laid out in different maps. So what we'll do is we'll go to File, uh, Open Level. This will open us to the Maps folder in your project and you can see they've got tons of different maps that showcase all these different features. We're gonna look at this blueprint communication. So I'm just gonna double click on that to open it up. So let's hit play and have a look here. As we approach the first station, when we get near the button, it turns on a light blueprint. The button is also its own blueprint. And these are communicating with a target blueprint. We'll take a closer look at these in a minute. This one, uh, communicates uh, via actor casting. So when we approach the button, it has a battery here that pushes up into the light to turn it on. There's actually three separate blueprints here that are communicating and working together to make this happen. Then we've got uh, actor casting to child blueprints. We've got a low light, medium light, and bright light variations. Then we've got uh, casting to all actors of class. So this one button will turn on all these lights because they are of the same blueprint class. So now that we took a look there, uh, we'll try to actually break down this functionality. And it really all starts with this first station that has a target blueprint communication. If we click on the button, we'll see that it's got a public variable called target light. And if we hit the magnifying glass over here, it'll take us to its target, which is that light there. And that can be set either through this drop down or with the dropper. You just click on the dropper, then you find the blueprint in the level. And it has to be of the correct type. We'll take a look at that later. Um, and that's how you directly connect one blueprint to another. In order to create this variable, let's jump into this generic button blueprint. In the viewport tab, we see that it's made of basically a button mesh that has a material that can swap out to green and then a trigger that the user can walk into to trigger the event. And then uh, the event graph, we see that the trigger collision has a on begin overlap and end overlap events on the collision that will uh, flip flop the button material and also trigger a uh, specific function within the target. Let's jump over here to the variables. Let's click on target light. We're gonna look at it a little closer. The variable name is target light, but the most important thing is the type, which is of type light bulb basic. So basically when you change this type to light bulb basic, you can, light bulb basic, you can then access everything that is part of that class. So with this instance here, they've drug out a reference. And when you drag out, you actually have uh, an access to this event inside called toggle light and that will show up just automatically. Now if you double click on toggle light it'll actually take us over to the light bulb basic blueprint class and right to the event uh, that fires off when it's triggered. So basically what happens is something collides, it takes a look at its target, says hey I'm either turning you off or on that information flows through here and it says when you turn on, we are firing off this animation that controls the light brightness. If we're off, we're just setting the light brightness to black, which turns off the light. 
So essentially what's happening here is that this blueprint is communicating with this blueprint via this target connection. And then within this button blueprint, you have access to that target light anywhere you want in your level to access anything that's inside of it, such as in this case, the toggle light. And you can toggle that light on or off. It's up to you. And this is not just, you know, this can be any event or function that exists in that class. The best way to learn about anything is to try and recreate it. So what we're going to do is just go for uh, a basic recreation of this first target blueprint example here out of our very own class so you can see exactly the nuts and bolts of what's going on. Let's start off by creating our own folder. I'm just going to expand here, right click on content, say new folder. My stuff. Inside the folder we're going to create a new blueprint, say blueprint class, actor class. And we'll call this bp underscore button. Nice. And we'll go ahead and create the light as well. Blueprint class, actor, bp underscore light. Let's go ahead and open up our button class. We are going to need a collision shape. I'm just going to use a box. And I'm just going to leave it like that. It says hidden in game. I'm going to uncheck that so we can see it and know when we're stepping into it. And then I will add a static mesh component. We're going to make that, see if we can find this light, uh, this button. I said button, here we go. Oh, that's okay. We're going to rearrange here, move the box up a little bit, make this maybe about right here. Compile and save that um, as is habit. We're going to go down to variables, add a new variable. This is going to be your target. and under your target type, we're actually going to look for that light we just created. So uh, BP underscore light. There we go. So we want the variable type to be of the light so that when we reference it later, we'll have uh, full knowledge of what we're working with. So in the event graph, let's delete all this stuff here. We're going to drag out target reference. If we drag out from there, we don't really have any functions at all because we haven't set anything up. So let's go do that. In the BP light function, we're actually just going to add a light. We'll just say point light. And then uh, clear this out. Create a custom event. We're going to call this toggle. Actually, let's call it Turn on. So when we say turn on, we are going to take this light and set intensity. La, 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 set intensity. Ah, I guess I could have done it automatically there. And then the light's intensity when it's on is 5,000. So we'll make sure that when it's turning on, we'll set that to 5,000. We're going to create a new custom event. We're going to call it, you guessed it, turn off. Same thing, we're going to copy and paste this intensity function, plug it up to the point light target, but this time we're just going to say zero. Now this isn't the most ideal way to set a light off and on uh, just by using its intensity, but we're going to do it here. So compile and save, move that around. Let's go back to our button. So now that we created two functions in our light um, and our target is of type light, we should now have access to, yeah, turn off and on. So we will just pull one out for each. Whoops. Turn on and turn off. And we are going to have those be triggered by an event from the collision box, which is uh, begin overlap. With the collision box selected, we can right click, event, collision, and end overlap. So what's gonna happen here is when we begin overlapping, we're gonna 
turn our target on. When we end overlapping, we are going to turn our target off. Let's compile and save that. Go back to our level. Let's pull out our button, pull out our light here, pull it a little up off the ground. So this is the most important part. We have our blueprints. We have the types. They know what types each other are or the button knows what type the light is, but it doesn't know the exact light. So with the button selected, um, actually what we have to do is go into the button, go to the target variable and hit the little eyeball next to there, compile, save, go back to blueprints and that will open up our target variable. Now we can choose a drop down and choose the only target that we actually have in the level, which is our light, or we can choose the dropper like before and just hover over the light and select that. Now hopefully if I did everything right and I walk up, hit play to this light, yeah, it's sort of working. There's a little bit with the logic because it starts on already. But basically that's uh, the gist of the target communication with blueprints where you have a target variable that's directly um, talking to another actor or another blueprint, talking to another blueprint class. I really appreciate it. I hope you learned something new. See you next time.